Hi, everybody. Matt Bernie and Mike Beard taking a look at the formulated race of the day for Wednesday, June the 7th. Race number four, Penn National. We're going to be going five furlongs on the turf course. Let's take a look at this field. I want to remind everyone, go over to the Race of the Day page on DRF.com. You can get your free formulator pass performances and handicap along with us right in post position order. Keep in mind the seven crab cakes is a main track only. Looks like there is a little bit of weather that could be in the forecast, but hopefully not enough to take this thing off the turf. The number one horse, just too much. Lynn Ashby, this is a horse most recently, was a winner on the Preakness undercard, or Preakness weekend, I should say. Uh, got the job done at 24-1. to 1. Right. I think needs the lead, and yes. I'm not sure that she's going to get the lead, and I also don't think she's fast enough. Yeah, I think that's the big problem for her. Um, and, you know, she's a little cheap on the way. She just won an allowance race, but she's a little cheap on the way in against this kind of competition. And it does feel like she's sort of a one-way speed. I don't think she's fast enough to make the front. The number two is no great shakes. Uh, no disrespect. I don't have a lot to say about this horse. I don't think she can win. Good luck. Good luck. Great shakes. We move on to the number three, <laughs> Uphill Battle. This is another horse that, it's interesting to see them go back to the turf with her. I just yeah. wonder if at this point you see the amount of second and third place yeah. finishes. If you're tra playing some sort of a try or a super, maybe she's one that you throw in. I have to be honest, I don't like her from a win standpoint. Yeah, I don't either. I, I am interested, though, that they finally go back to turf with her. I mean, yeah. what took them so long? I know her dirt form is, you know, sort of okay, okay. but she's not winning races on yeah. that surface. Her turf form is actually not bad. They've only tried it three times. The number four is Grogger for Kathleen Parker. This is a horse that most recently also ran on the yeah. Preakness undercard. This was the horse that just couldn't quite get to just too much. Just too much went out there, set honest fractions considering right. the testing ground. Still stayed on. Grogger came from basically dead last and came right. from 100 out of it on the far outside. If I think there's going to be a, a decent amount of pace in here. I just don't know if this horse is quite good enough to win. Right. I wonder. I think there will be a pace, too. I just wonder if she can take advantage of it. I don't think that she can. I mean, obviously, it's she's stepping into like sort of a different league here against these stakes-quality yeah. turf sprinters, and she ran fine last time. I'm not taking anything away from her, but she's going to have to do a lot better than that. Speaking of the pace, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. It shows the number eight horse, Everything Lovely, who's arguably the horse to beat for Kathleen DeMasi right. out there on the front end. You also have the six night delay light for Linda Rice. We'll talk about each one of those in a moment, but we already touched on just too much. If she's a horse that absolutely needs the lead, based on that, she's not getting it. Yeah, right. Based on the pace projector, she's just not fast enough to get there. The five is Elusive Joni for Gary Capuano. This is an interesting horse who most recently ran into Everything Lovely, and, and Everything Lovely in the very one went out there and wired the field. Right. This horse tried to make up some ground late. The problem is, I suppose you can say that's been the case for each of the past handful of starts. And, uh, I mean, is it is it unkind to say that maybe she's not this good? Um, she certainly has to prove that, right? I mean, yeah. she's got to prove that she's this good. She's in against a couple of horses who have sort of, they've held their own in stakes races already. Yeah. So she's got to prove that she can do that. I thought, in a lot of ways, she ran very well last time in the, the very one. I mean, she did get to save a lot of ground in that race, and she did manage to get a clean run up the inside through the stretch. On the other hand... I mean, everything lovely fairly walked on the yes, lead in that. I mean, she sure did enough. not go fast. So this horse had a lot to do and do a relatively slow pace. She might get a much better setup this time. If they do throw it down early, she should have something to run at yeah. late. The six is Night Delight we mentioned for Linda Rice. This is a horse that... Now, I know this horse a little bit from Southern California yeah. before she got over here to Linda's hands. I've always thought that this horse is absolutely at her best when she's on the lead. Right. If you look at the pace projector, they don't have her on the lead. Right. But it makes me wonder if all of a sudden, instead of having those three strung out a little bit, if those three, the one, the six, and the eight, are going to throw it down and maybe it sets up for someone from off the pace. It, yeah, it'll be very interesting. That's the way I'm thinking about it, too. I wonder what will happen with the pace because I think it's the key to this race. I, I agree with you. I like Night Delight as a horse, and I think she's at her best when they just go. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that they're sending her here for this race thinking, let's go. We just put her on the lead. Um, I know Everything Lovely has a lot of speed to her outside, um, but she doesn't always go to the lead, Everything Lovely. And she's outside of this horse. So I just wonder what happens. If they get aggressive from the gate, go to the front, will, they, will Everything Lovely sort of try and track her from the outside? I think that's Night Delight's best chance to win. She had no chance last time in that blue sparkle. I don't know what kind of trip and <laughs> ride that was to be five wide around the, the track. Entire way. And then she got tired at the end. I'm not going to hold that race against her. And obviously she's got plenty of races on the go back to make her tough in here. Yeah, I have to be honest, I don't think that race was bad at all when you actually, it looks terrible on paper, but yeah. considering the trip that she got in there, it was almost as if there was no plan and we're just going to kind of park yeah. out here and cruise around. She's at her best when they send her. You also have a positive formulator fact for Linda Rice in your corner. If you like this horse for Night Delight past year, turf second off the layoff, sprint races, 4 for 15, 203 ROI. Yep. 
usually going to find good stuff for Linda Royce Formulator. Again, Crab Cakes is a main track only. We will skip over her. We go to the eight, everything lovely. I think in many ways the horse to beat in here, just strictly from speed figure standpoint, from running style standpoint. The concern becomes what you had just laid out. She got out there and she was allowed to set, let's say, tepid fractions. They yeah. almost went 46 for a half mile. And she opened up down the lane and she just held on late. Yep. You would imagine the pace is going to be a little bit different this time. Around. I think it is. And listen, maybe it won't matter. Maybe she'll just go. Because if she's shown in the past that she can still go fast and still run a yep. really good race, um, she just happened to have all the best of it last time. And it makes me, you know, she's going to be a relatively short price here. It makes me want to at least take a little shot against her because. I mean, come on, man. She was After they got down to about the half mile of that race, she was supposed to win. Absolutely so. The nine is Lulu Island. This is a horse that we get back to the turf. Keep in mind, they tried to get her on the turf last time. It was washed off, unfortunately. If you go prior to that, her start two back, that was a win, albeit 11, 11 claimers. claimers yeah. A little bit on the cheap side. Uh, she should have a decent running style for this race. Yeah. I just don't know if she's good enough. Yeah, I agree. She's a good horse. She wins a lot of races, and she is a turf sprinter. It's what she wants to do, but she's just found a pretty tough spot here. I'm a little bit fascinated by the 10, Caitlin's Me Wish. Too. I think if I had to have just an absolute sort of wild card in here, maybe yeah. it would be this horse. We've got a positive formulator fact. It's a limited data for the trainer and the connections, though. Past two years, first time turf. Three for seven with a 377 ROI. That's a 43% success rate. This is an interesting horse. Um, the student council is about 9% first time turf, so yep. nothing overwhelming. You also look at the, the family on the bottom side. The dam, she never started on turf. Right. Uh, the, the, sim, the siblings combined to row for four on turf, so right. it, it's not like this thing is screaming. But she shows up. She's only been off the board one time from ten starts, and she's won four of them. It's hard for me to just sit here and knock a horse right. that, uh, running style-wise as well, looks like she could work out a good trip. She's the, and she's the only wild card in the race, really. I mean, if you're looking for a price, you, yeah. know, you probably almost have to default to her. And you know, I like that she's got speed, but doesn't need the lead, so yep. she can be close to the pace. You know, I want. I'm with you, kind of in that. There's some turf on the face of it. When you look at her pedigree, I wanted to find a little performance. Something. There's no performance yeah. on the grass. But she's got a little turf in her pedigree, a good trainer stat, bit of a price, nice post, little speed. There are things to like about this horse. It'll be interesting to see how everything shakes down for the Formulator Race of the Day on Wednesday. Let's take a look at our selections in here. Uh, Mike, you decided to go with Night Delight for Linda. Yeah, I don't like the trip that she got last time. I know that she's better than that, and I'm hoping they are on a send here. I'll admit I am not entirely convinced that elusive Joni is as good as the top two right. in here but I think she should work out a good trip and I do have a, a sneaky feeling that that pace is going to cook agree. a little bit more early on than maybe the pace projector would suggest it's going to uh, if you're playing at home Wednesday night Penn National Formula Race of the Day check out DRF Bets all sorts of good deals for you including the opportunity to be a VIP for a week for new DRF Bet subscribers, you can take a look right there, drfbets.com slash VIP. You can start with a $300 bonus and much, much more. Again, the Formula Race of the Day, Race 4, Penn National, Wednesday night. You can get the free PPs over on the Race of the Day page, scheduled post time, 722 Eastern. Best of luck.